Good evening. Welcome to our weekly home cell uh, Bible study presentation. Amidst the challenges we are currently facing worldwide, uh, this one way we stay in touch with one another and with God's Word. We are currently doing a people restored, but we have come a long way. We have journeyed with the gospel project. Um, we, we started right with a, a volume called In the Beginning, experiencing creation to where God established. He, he, we move on to his covenant with his people. We journey to Egypt just to see God's hand taking God's people out of bondage, in out of Egypt, for his people to worship him. We then traveled with Moses as he bring God's people into the promised land. We then saw a kingdom that God has provided to his people with a wise and godly king. We then experienced a nation that was divided in the next study where God speaks to his people. He judges their sin and showed mercy to them. Today, we see how people is restored, sustained, and prepared uh, through God. If you turn to Unit 18 in Session 2, roughly about page 103, you can see how God provides leaders to strengthen and help protect His people from their enemies. Just as Pastor Mentor started this year with Nehemiah, so we will also be continuing in this lesson with Nehemiah. Uh, what makes us different to the rest of creation? Just think about it. And that is actually our emotions. These emotions can change the way we look at life and how we respond to life or the way we respond to situations. That is what happened to Nehemiah. His emotions got the better of him and he felt for his people. And that was the Jewish people at the time. He was just a cupbearer in the king's palace and God used him to protect his people. So the first point that we want to make uh, this evening is I want to touch on um, is God's leader feels burdened for the people and prays for them. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verses 1 to 4, we, we see the encounter of Nehemiah there. As Nehemiah year of conditions of the people, he matched that with the character, promises, and plan of God. So he had to have so he had to have a walk with God. He knew that it would have taken more than him at the helm. What he did was that he modeled a heart of dependence uh, on and and subsequent confidence in the Lord that showed up in how he lived and led. The, the people at the end of the day. According to, to Crawford Lorith, the author of the book Leadership as an Identity, he states there that never underestimate the power of self-deception and the pull towards self-reliance. Apart from the presence and power of God, these are irresistible. Do not trust yourself. Respond to God's call to be your source of everything. If you don't, you will damage God's work by ex extracting Him from the very thing He initiated in the first place. And that is in the little box in your book called Voice of the Church. And so secondly, we also want to look at, um, uh, my prompter just skipped, um, God's leader unites and strengthens uh, uh, the people for the work. That is in Nehemiah 2, verses 11 to 18. Nehemiah secured the favor of the king as God's gracious hand was on him and set off to do what God has laid on his heart. Through this, the people of God is united and strengthened for the work of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. 
the uniting or bringing together of the people was the important thing in, 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 in this element. In the same way, the gospel brings clarity and unity to believers by agreement and conviction. The fact that we all accepted Jesus as our Savior unites all of us and that no one can dispute. Nehemiah believed in a greater reality and connected the people to the very heart and mission of God. This he communicated with passion to the people. The late Pastor Bram Willemse always said that our job matters to God. And the study of God's word equips us for when we are out there in the workplace, at school, at university, wherever, we, wherever you find yourself. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter where you are. The strengthening you receive from God's word and the leadership at our church, uh, within our cell groups, is for the building of God's kingdom at the end of the day. Then thirdly, we see that God's leader protects and encourages the people in the face of opposition. We look at Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 11 to 14. As we labor in God's vineyard, we face discouragement and danger. So did God's people as they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. As a leader, Nehemiah did not ignore their fears and concerns. He addressed it. He protected them strategically and encouraged them deeply. Nehemiah used the character of God to encourage the people to drive away their fear. And this is a very important point to note, that he did not talk to us about his leadership abilities, but he used the character of God to encourage the people to drive away that fear that they have. All of us can remember when a leader or a pastor has encouraged us with the very word of God and God's faithfulness at the end of the day. This is the reason we're still serving God, as discouragement is always around us. Just as Nehemiah reminded the people that God is on their side, so we have the same courage as the body of Christ with our leader, Jesus. We all fight for the well-being of our brothers and sisters in Christ, pursuing their holiness and encouraging them in the fight against sin. We also join together for the Great Commission, which is beyond any human ability to accomplish, because it is God through His Holy Spirit that accomplishes that. The New Testament described the church as the body of Christ. The church lives and operates as Christ's representative here on earth, which Christ is the head. This means that the church is an extension of Christ's ministry, uh, carrying out his work by fulfilling the Great Commission. Because we are protected and secure in Christ, we join with others to complete the kingdom work God has given us. For your mission, reflect on this. What burden had the Lord placed on your heart for you to obey in faith? Just as he did with Nehemiah. And then secondly, how can we in our groups encourage each other to continue the work of God? Think about ways of how you can do it and think of someone with whom you will share the gospel with so they can know the great and awe-inspiring Lord Jesus Christ. So think about those that we can, can uh, continue with us. And I also want to encourage you to do the daily studies that follow in the pages after this and share with one another the truths God is revealing to you. As you working through those pages day by day until next Wednesday, you share with people um, the truths God is revealing to you. Let us pray. God of mercy, give us a burden for your people. Allow us to be united as a church to do what you have instructed us to do and, and to do and to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. 
Father, help us to encourage one another in the face of opposition, in the execution of what you have commanded us. Amen. Enjoy God's word and enjoy the further study. Amen.